Okay, good afternoon again. Um, so Helen, Laurie and I are here now to give you an update on CLA's California Summer Reading Outcomes Initiative, our statewide evaluation project. So as you know, we already uh, collect your participation statistics each year, each year, your program outputs. Now thanks to support from the California State Library, CLA is also collecting information about your summer reading outcomes. So we're encouraging all libraries to start setting summer outcomes and sending your results to CLA much as you already submit your participation data. The Outcomes Initiative is an ongoing project and libraries can join any time and once you've joined we encourage you to participate annually and use your results each year as benchmark data to improve on the following year. I will give you a very quick overview of the initiative before handing over to Helen and Laurie who will be talking about their experiences of taking part in it. For full information, there will be an orientation webinar, um, January 27th, it's a Friday at noon, and we'll send out lots of reminders before that takes place. So, we developed the initiative to help CLA and help you discover and demonstrate the value and the results of your summer reading programs. It's also been developed to give you tools to help you find out what your community wants from the summer reading program, and also to help you expand summer reading to your underserved communities. So to take part, in essence, you complete these four steps. You set outcomes for your program, and we have developed statewide outcomes for libraries to use, which I'll talk about in a moment. You plan your program with the outcomes in mind. You collect data to determine whether your outcomes have been achieved. And we have surveys and focus groups for you to use to do that. And you send your results to CLA. And you also use the results to improve your own local summer reading programs. So we developed an outcome-based evaluation project because of all the benefits that outcome-based programming brings. The programs are planned with clearly defined outcomes in mind, so they're purposeful programs that are relevant to your communities. Because of the evaluation component, outcome-based programs generate data that help you improve your programs and also show everyone the impact and the value of what you're doing. To make it as easy as possible for libraries to participate and start sending us data, We've worked over the last few years to develop a very pre-packaged and a streamlined initiative. So we've worked with a team of librarians to develop the statewide outcomes, data collection tools, and a set of project resources. We used the participation data that you send us each year, and we piloted the initiative in a variety of libraries to develop two statewide outcomes that would relate to your summer reading programs and the things that you're already doing each summer. So outcome one is children or teens, adults or families belong to a community of readers and library users. The initiative can relate to whatever age group you work with with your summer reading programs. And the results you get from the surveys you distribute as part of outcome one will help you demonstrate how valuable your summer reading programs are to the people who regularly take part in them. Outcome two is a desired number of an underserved target group participate in the summer reading program. This outcome challenges libraries to identify groups who aren't currently participating in summer reading and devise strategies for bringing them into the library or taking the library to them. We've developed tools for you to use to collect and report your data and these can all be downloaded from CLA's website. The surveys now contain just eight questions to make them as easy as possible for your patrons to fill out and for library staff to collate before sending back the results to us. And our focus group questions can be used with children, teens, adults, or families. And we do ask participants to survey as many people as possible about the summer reading program, at least 100 participants, and then hold focus groups with smaller groups of patrons. Um, we encourage you to issue the surveys and do the focus groups because the surveys help you collect data that demonstrate the value and the significance of your programs, and those are the data that you send to us and then that you use to promote your programs in the community. And the focus groups help you generate local information about your summer reading programs and what your community wants from the summer reading program. We have other resources, and they include a project checklist, um, ideas for programs, and we definitely encourage you, if you participate, to plan programs and activities that will help you achieve your outcomes and um, all the ideas you see this afternoon can be tailored um, and you've to use in the initiative. We have guidelines on administering your surveys, we have reporting forms for submitting your results to CLA <laughs> and now we also have ideas for using um, your results. So essentially as I said before the outcomes is a very pre-packaged initiative, it's ready to go as soon as you want to take part. 
So that is a very whistle-stop tour of our evaluation initiative. If you think you'd like to start taking part, if you have any questions, please just feel free to be in touch with me at any time, and please do attend the webinar in January. I'd like to thank all the libraries that have taken part so far, that have been collecting data and submitting them to us and helping us refine the initiative into a very streamlined, manageable initiative, which we hope it is now. We know from these libraries that the initiative helps you improve your programs, keeps them relevant and cost effective. So please do join our early adopters and start taking part. The more that take part, the more we can show what libraries are doing and can demonstrate the value of everything you're doing every summer. So now I will hand over to Helen, who will talk about what it's like to take part in the initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. So for those of you who have never um, used outcomes-based evaluation before, it's actually fun and it's easy. And it's not significantly different than the way you already plan your summer reading programs. You probably come up with some goals for your summer reading program, um, some outputs that you want to achieve, whether it's the number of children you'd like to have signed up or the number of books that you want read uh, throughout summer. But for outcomes-based evaluation, the goal that you're going to use, the outcome that you're going to use, is to get that community of readers and library users. And um, Natalie and um, crew have put in place something that makes it simple and easy to implement in your libraries. So there are two tools that you use for data collection to evaluate whether or not you've met that outcome. And those are surveys and focus groups. The surveys are very easy to administer and valuable, and it's been made really easy because the surveys are available for you. They can be handed out at your programs, or you can hand them out at your desk, and if you offer an incentive, then you'll um, have no problem getting them completed. We used little pieces of candy uh, to get people to turn them in. Um, Surveys confirmed what we believed, which is that children think that the library is fun and friendly. They would recommend summer reading program to their friends. The teens said they would come back to the library after school started, and they said they liked to talk about books with their friends. The surveys gave valuable information about children's and teens' perceptions of our summer reading programs. The focus groups were easy and generate great data and actually, I think, are the most fun um, part of the whole process and the most meaningful part of the process. They're an amazing way to involve children and teens in giving you um, feedback about what they enjoy that you're doing and, and what you're missing. And the children and teens really appreciate this format and love to be able to give you their opinion on summer reading program and what your library is doing. Um, holding the focus groups, if you've never done it before, doesn't require significant amounts of preparation. You just probably need to pick up some ice cream or something to entice a group of children and teens to participate. Um, it's easiest if you piggyback off programs you're already doing, so making announcements when you have a performer in your library or after one of your teen programs. You let them know there will be food and they will be there with no problem. Um, some of the data gathered by libraries that participated in the pilot project told us a lot about what children and teens were interested in. Um, children said they liked talking about books online, reading online, um, and in face-to-face. -face. They also said that uh, they wanted more programs specifically targeted uh, to ages 8 through 11 or that tween audience, and that tweens weren't certain where they belonged in the library. If you're interested in tweens, uh, there's a program on Sunday specifically about uh, tween programming. Um, teen boys tended to think of the library as a place to socialize and play games. And teens felt less welcome in adult areas of the library than they did in the children's area. So programming can be simple and passive or more complex and engaging. And it's very similar to much of the programming you're already doing. You can set up a table where people can place books that they recommend to make themselves part of this community. Um, you can display the reviews that your participants write on the walls throughout your library. Have your participants help you write the book lists that you hand out throughout summer. You can create virtual spaces for teens and adults to write and review uh, recommendations on books. Intergenerational programs like teens reading to kids or something like grandparents and books create that community. Um, holding book clubs or book discussions either in person or online. 
if you create or buy t-shirts for your teens, um, you're creating that sense of community. And you could have teens uh, create their own artwork for their favorite books and replace the covers. And these and many more ideas that have been implemented by uh, participating libraries in the past few years are on the CLA website. And now I'll hand off to Lori to talk about sign-up methods. Hello. If you incorporate outcomes one and two provided by CLA, it's important to let them permeate your entire summer reading process, starting with the way you sign up people for summer reading. Of course, if you're reaching out to underserved populations, outreach is going to be terribly important for you. So consider finding an influential community member and having them sign people up for summer reading rather than coming and giving a presentation yourself. Get, get them to do the presentation, maybe train them. So there's that community buy-in. Um, you can also think about maybe having volunteers go door to door to local businesses if you run an adult program and have people sign up that way. Um, think beyond the simple tabling methods that we, we tend to rely on when doing outreach. Try to make it a little bit more community based and very local. So, for instance, at the Sacramento Public Library, we, um, we participated at an art museum's book arts mixer and reached out to people in their 20s and 30s, not traditionally a big group who participate in summer reading, but we had a little bit of an incentive there for them. We all made matchbook journals. So it was a little bit something they could take home. It had a sticker about summer reading in the matchbook journal, and it just made it a little bit more fun. So. But the most important thing is, is using these outcomes. And I, um, it, here's the best, what's in it for you? Obviously, we're gonna be doing these great things. The children are going to um, have stronger reading skills. Summer reading is a wonderful thing. But how do we support our summer reading programs? How do we keep them ongoing? At our Authors on the Move fundraiser, which is a yearly event, this year, at each of the, the tables, we had cards like this one. Um, explaining why summer reading was so important, the outcomes of summer reading programs. And the foundation raised $38,000 in five minutes. It was definitely the best use of outcomes I've seen. And this next year, we'll be able to incorporate the surveys and feedback from focus groups and put those on the table so they can see why to continue the summer reading program is so important. So there, you know, it's it's a bumpy road starting out with with using outcomes. So you want to you want to troubleshoot a little bit. Um, you're going to be reaching out to, to new organizations, forming new partnerships, and I found it important. Uh, Natalie reminded me that following up is not nagging. So you have to you know make contact multiple times with these people. Um, remind them that you're coming to to present your program. We we did several initiatives where we actually took. Uh, groups of uh, kids through the program step by step. We have a bingo card system, which you all have copies of. Um, so we made sure that they each completed one line of the bingo card. And sometimes, you know, the group would forget that we were we were coming by. So next year, there's going to be a lot of a lot more emailing. Um, and knowing your partner organization is terribly important. It's pretty obvious, but um, knowing how long their summer is versus how long your summer is. At one, or, at one group, we, um, we were off by a week, so they had all gone home, and we weren't able to finish our surveys, which was, was sad, but you know, the, the program was still a great success, and we'll partner again next year. Um, so just remember that it's a process, and you can start slow. We've been doing the bingo thing for a few years now, and we were able to change a few of the squares on the bingo to incorporate the community of readers. So things like attend a book club were added and write a review just to try to bring those outcomes in in a way that didn't disrupt our normal summer reading program. We also found a way to collect the, the five books method without totally changing the way our game works. So we just added up two of these lines. We figured that that counted for five. And we also provided a way for staff to count the five books, but we didn't, didn't enforce anything on them uh, last year. Maybe this year, but different. Thank you. Any questions? So the question was, um, with the year-round year school versus the regular school calendar, they have a shorter summer period, would we still recommend five books? I mean, I think I would. I think I would try and get the kids to read five books. Um, would everyone agree? 
I guess, I guess what I would say is that, um, you know, maybe you're not doing five books, maybe you're doing minutes or you're doing hours, um, you know, and just figure out some sort of conversion. What we did was we said whatever we were doing was approximately equal to the five books. So if a child completed the program, then they also did the five book challenge. But we didn't advertise it to our customers, we just did it internally because we didn't want to confuse them with two separate summer reading programs.